So, you are making the jump from Blender to Cascader, but you're not really sure how. Not a problem. First thing you need to understand is Cascader is an animation specialist software. It is not meant to replace Blender. The same way Substance Painter is just for texturing and ZBrush is just for sculpting, Cascader is just for animating. So all of your 3D modeling and geometry modifier stuff, you still want to do that in Blender. You only come to Cascader when your weight painting is finished and you're ready to animate. The controls for it function most like any other industry standard software. You hold Alt and Left, Right and Middle click to manipulate your view. And here you can toggle between the IK rig, the FK rig, and all the the different view modes that we all know and love. On the right side we have all the usual hierarchy stuff and when you click on something you will typically see a gizmo allowing you to change the position, rotation, and scale options. And right next to that we can also change between setting the gizmo to global or local mode. That being said, one of the first things you will notice about Cascader is you do not need to create the rig. The rig is automatically provided to you and it's extremely powerful out of the box. By default it is IK based, but at any second you can switch it to bone mode and use FK if you want. Now the difference between these two modes is the default mode allows you to manipulate the controls that deal with typical human motion. So in this mode you can see we have controllers for two arms, two legs, two hands, two feet, the torso, the neck, and the head. These are things that every human has and that's what this first mode is for. The second mode, which is the point mode, that has all the controllers for all the things that are specific for your character. So animal ears, tails, hair bones, anything specific to the clothing, that's going to be manipulated in this mode instead. Now, I know what your first question is. What if my character has more than just normal human bones? And the answer is, that's okay. Usually when you import your character for the first time, it'll ask you if you want to go to quick rig mode. You say yes, and while you're there, you're going to select all of these to the correct bone name, so make sure your right hand is set to the right hand. Make sure your left leg is set to the left leg. And for any external appendage like hair or ears, to add a controller to it, all you gotta do is select it, and under additional points, hit add. This extra sticky outy part is the direction the bone is facing. So if you're doing things like a tail, you probably want to make sure that all of these are facing the same direction. Positive is forwards, negative will flip it around. Now, you cannot make your own custom rig controllers. When you add bones to the rig, they will translate to normal cascader rig points, which are manipulated the same way that all the other joints in the default skeleton are. However, if you go under commands and constraint, you will see a list of modifiers that you can use to do many of the things that you used to be able to in your custom rig and blender. On the bright side though, because Cascader's one-size-fits-all rig, it does a great job at automatically translating just about every other skeleton to itself, which means if you import pretty much any humanoid skeleton into Cascader, it will automatically be able to create a control rig for you, which allows you to begin animating immediately. The philosophy behind this software is to reduce the amount of time between importing a character and starting to animate it. So, by providing you an extremely powerful default rig, you spend less time rigging and more time animating. But I do believe they have plans to eventually allow us to create our own rig controls, so in the future you'll probably see that coming in later on. Now, the reason the default rig is designed the way it is, is because the animation AI is constantly on in real time while you animate. Cascader has a bunch of in-house motion capture actors and actresses that they record to build their own unique database of animations. And it's from this database that the AI automatically guesses what the most likely poses of each of your body parts are supposed to be. You can see this in action if we just start grabbing and moving the feet around. Notice how by just moving the feet, the AI is already adjusting and anticipating what the most likely pose for the rest of the body considering where we moved the feet. Now, if you have parts of the body that you don't want to automatically be affected as you move the feet around, you can just click that part and hit Shift Z. And now you see when you move things around, that part will no longer move. Now to remove a blue key, all you gotta do is select it again and hit Shift Z. You can also drag select and Shift Z multiple points at the same time, and if you hold shift, you can precisely select multiple things at once. If you double click a joint, it will automatically select all of its children. Control Z will undo and Control Shift Z will redo. If you look at the bottom, you will see a timeline. It typically starts with one keyframe at the beginning. If we scroll to another frame and press F, it will create a new keyframe. And if we set a new pose for this frame and then highlight the space in between, open up this menu and hit the purple button, it will generate the most likely animation that would have needed to happen between these two frames. 
If you're not happy, you can right click and set a bias so we can bias it towards walking or running or combat or acrobatics. It's really whatever you need. But the point is this creates a baseline for you to start building off of really fast. If at any point you like any of the frames that it generates, you can press F again to give it a key. And now you can start making any micro adjustments that you want on top. And it's extremely flexible because at any point we can change and move around these keyframes and the in-between will try and account for these adjustments in real time. Time. Just keep in mind that the in-between function is based on real time between two frames. So here you can see the in-between is trying to walk from one position to another. But if we make the positions farther away without increasing the time, now you will see the character try to run to that position because running is the only way for it to naturally get to that same position within the same amount of time. If the in-between looks a little bit weird, it probably means you don't have enough frames in between for it to generate something that makes sense. Now you don't have to use the in-between feature if you don't want to. As you can see, we can also use different types of typical curves like Bezier, Linear, and Snap the way you would in any other traditional animation software. If you drag select multiple frames and then hit Alt and press F, you will be able to key multiple frames at the same time. And if you ever want to copy and paste multiple frames simultaneously, double click the middle to select all, Select all the frames you like, Control shift c then go to another part of the timeline and drag select the same amount of space, and then hit Control shift v to paste. Now, you do actually have the option to keep parts of the character on different layers, just like we did in Blender or Maya. All you gotta do is open the timeline into tracks, and here you will see that each part of the body has its own track, and if you want to manually disable a keyframe on just the left hand on this part of the timeline, you can do that. Something to note here is you will see things normally move in IK. However, if you want to move something in FK, you can easily set that part of the timeline by selecting it and then pressing FK instead. This is very useful whenever you want to do things like sword slashes, where the IK interpolation gives you some wonky looking results. As you can see, if we set the arm to FK instead, then now we finally get that nice natural looking sweeping motion. Now, let's say you have joints that you want to create their own tracks for. For example, this root bone doesn't normally have its own track. Well, you can easily make one by clicking on the bone and then down on the left hit add track. If you ever wanna remove a track, for example, let's say you had two characters, but now you're only using one, just select the track and hit remove track. And if you get this message, it just means there are things in the scene that are still connected to the track you're trying to delete. So to get rid of it, just hold alt, double click the track, try again, and now it will remove everything that was related to that track. Now, as far as controlling the timeline goes, if you middle click a frame, you will be able to move it around. If you hold shift and middle click a frame, you will duplicate it instead. At any point, if you you click the blue number it will automatically scale the timeline to fit all your keyframes or if you ever want to see the entire timeline you can right click the stack over here at any point you can increase the total frames by manually typing a new number over here and if you want to increase the number of frames between two keys just click in the middle and press the plus button likewise if you ever want to decrease the number of frames between two keys just press the minus button instead if you have a bunch of frames that you want to compress or stretch then you can select them all and hit Control t and now they will uniformly be adjusted when you drag the end. In order to mirror a frame, select all the joints you want to mirror and then up here select the plane you want to mirror things on. If you want to mirror the animation according to world space globally, keep pelvis position on. Otherwise, turn it off. Now, once you have two key frames, you can go up here and turn on auto physics. This will do its best to try and apply real world physics, time, and weight shifting momentum in the animation. It's kind of a proto form of the purple in between feature. It's actually a great way to quickly turn a few key frames into an animation that actually feels like it has real world weight and velocity. At any point, if you like what you see, you can click the snap to physics button and this will bake the green simulation directly onto your original key frames, allowing you to edit the details even further and repeat the process until you're happy. Now here's a cool little trick. If you ever want to automatically add some secondary motion to the end of the animation, if you just duplicate the last frame, extend it a little, then recalculate the physics by turning it off and on, you will see that physics has simulated a more realistic recoil at the end of the animation, which of course you can now bake to make real. Now, let's talk about finger positions. By default, they are hidden, but you can reveal them by going up here and clicking this button. Now, just like the body, the hands have real-time AI help as well. So if you grab the pointer finger and start moving it around, the other fingers will automatically start to move in a way that makes sense. You can also grab the pinky as well and just control the last three fingers. 
Now, if you do not want to do things this way, you can always go over here to the FK rig mode and bend the finger bones manually. You can also do this with the box mode as well. It's your choice. Just make sure that when you're adjusting the fingers that you are in local rotation, not global. And be careful when copying and pasting the finger positions. Always make sure you are in local mode before you control C and then go to the next frame and control V. Now at any point, if you import extra meshes like weapons and environments into the scene, you can adjust them in mesh mode, and you can even parent them to bones by dragging them into the hierarchy. You can also import reference videos to help guide your animation in the menu. All you gotta do is set how much of the video you want, and once again, you can place it wherever you need in mesh mode. Now, those are the main key features that you will use to animate in Cascader. But I'm going to show you some extra useful things that I've learned that kind of threw me off the first time I moved here from Blender. So this big point is actually the center of mass, and it's a great way to just grab the whole character and move or rotate it in bulk. However, this does also move the feet. So if you want to move everything except for the feet, the easier way to do that is to double click right above the pelvis, then shift click the actual pelvis, and now you can move everything without affecting the feet. Conversely, you can also press R to lock joints in place. So another way you could do this is just by locking the feet and then moving the center of mass. And this is actually the easiest way to get the character's heel to lift off the ground while keeping the toes planted on the ground. At any point, if you want to unlock joints, just click them and press R again. Now, one of my favorite things you can do is set the pivot point wherever you want by just holding Alt and right clicking. This becomes extremely useful when you go into point mode, which is basically like the normal mode, but it gives you finer control. So if you want to rotate the pelvis left or right, you just got to select the pelvis points and then hold Alt and right click the pivot point, And now you can rotate the hips based on that point. Now, this is also a good time to talk about feet position, because most of the time you will have auto physics turned on while you're animating, which lets you see what the real animation looks like. Now you will notice that when the toes have no blue keys, they will try their best to snap to the floor if they are close enough to the main body. And you will notice that when they do snap, they will turn green. This means that Cascader understands that those parts of the feet are indeed contacting the ground. And you will see them stop turning green when you see they are not touching the ground. But sometimes you will find that the feet should obviously be on the ground and for some reason Cascader may not register that. When this happens on the right, if you go to fulcrum points and say enforce, now you can see that it does understand that the feet are supposed to be on the ground. So that is how you brute force the feet contacting the floor. On a similar note, sometimes you'll be doing flying or floating animations where the character is not expected to touch the ground. For these kinds of animations, the physics simulator will get confused. So in order to fix that, just go to the physics settings and turn off the physics corrector. And now you will see the animation will start to make a lot more sense. If for some reason you ever see the physics not capturing a particular keyframe that you want it to, for example here as we do this flip, it's obviously supposed to go straight, but you can clearly see that the simulation is biasing towards the side. But that's okay because we can actually brute force this pose by hitting the flag button. And now you can see the physics knows to capture this pose exactly as it is in the original timeline. Now, sometimes when you import an FBX animation, you will see the entire animation, but you will find that none of its joints are blue during the animation, which means they're not locked in. This is very common when you import motion capture data. So you will want to make sure that before you make any adjustments to lock the poses into each frame. And you can do that by selecting the entire timeline, double click the middle to select all, then going up and then hitting the auto pose lock state. And now, if you go through the timeline, you will see that the joints have now been locked blue to each key frame. So when you adjust things now, it's still going to need to be cleaned up, but you won't break the poses as you work. Also, one of my favorite parts of animating in Cascader is how easy it is to make sweeping changes across the entire animation. Let's say we have a hand-waving loop like this, but the hand is way too high, and I want to lower it uniformly across the board. Well, just select all the keyframes that we want to adjust, and then activate the interval edit mode. Now, if we make an adjustment like lowering it a little bit and then turn edit mode off, you will see that change has been made across all the frames we had selected simultaneously. Now, let's say that we have something that you want to spin continuously. Well, to do that, you just drag select the interval you want something to rotate, press Alt F to keyframe everything, hopefully you've made a new track for it, and then set it to linear. Turn interval edit on, make sure the thing that you want to spin is selected, and now on the last frame, rotate it in chunks less than 180 degrees. If you see the gizmo shift shades, you have gone too far. So you just gotta keep rotating it in small chunks. The more you rotate it, obviously the more it's gonna spin. Another extremely useful feature in Cascader is the tween machine. This is a feature 
feature that allows us to have joints move towards a position that they were in in the frame before or the frame after. Now the best use case I've found for this is when you have an animation and the feet position is supposed to stay consistent. For example, here the foot is obviously anchoring the entire animation and we don't want it to move from this position. So something that we can do instead of copying and pasting the position from the last frame, we can actually go straight to that frame into the tween machine and if we move it forward, it will now move to the exact same position as it is in the next key frame. Or if you do it the opposite way, it will move to the exact same position as it is in the frame before. Another useful tool that you should probably know is parent constraints. Let's say we wanted the IK hand R bone to follow the right hand. Well, to do that, while you're in the quick rig mode, with the IK hand R bone selected, we shift click the blue ball of the joint that we wanted to follow. In my case, it's the right hand. And then under additional actions, hit connect. And now you can see when we're animating, the IK hand bone always follows the hand. Or let's say that we wanted to create a system where one hand follows another. This would be something common for things like two handed weapons. Well, to set that up, you just go into point mode, double click the hand that should follow the other, then shift click the thing that you want it to be parented to. Then go to commands, constraints, set it to points, and then pick the parent. And now on the right under constraints, you can set the frames that you want this constraint to be active. Just remember that you have to be in point mode when you're using this constraint. Also, if the constraints look like it's not working on the frames in between keyframes, you'll want to select everything in between and then turn the constraint on for that interval. Likewise, let's say you have a two-handed position. The second hand is in the correct position on the first frame, but it's not in the correct position on the other frame. Well, to fix that, go to the good frame, double-click the hand, and hold alt and right click the other hand. Set gizmo to local and then hit the relative button. Then control C to copy. Then we just go to the other frame, control V to paste, and now you will see it is in the same position as the frame before. And that's pretty much it. That's 90% of everything you will need to use this software. I have a few other tips that you can find in my Cascader playlist, but a lot of them are more situational or specific. For now, I just wanted to get you up and running with all the things that you probably needed to know. And if you're new here and you don't actually have Cascader yet, I'll leave a link to it down in the pinned comment. It's super cheap and affordable, and if you use my promo code, you'll get an even bigger discount. Regardless, hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.